One of the most like common complaints about math in school, and it's totally justified by the way, I'm not going to like argue with you, is that sometimes math does not seem relevant to real life. And graphing lines, it can, like, oh, my paycheck is directly related to my hours worked. But a lot of data in the real world is, like, scattered, right? If you're, like, looking for um, real information on, like, you know, the number of years in a certain area and how many bunnies live in that area, right? So after one year, you have this many bunnies. After two years, you have this many bunnies. It'll be, like, pretty scattered around. It's not going to be, like, a perfect line, right? And, you know, that'll work for... For most data in the real world, it's probably not going to be totally perfectly linear. And so they call these scatter plots. Like when you graph data points, they are scatter plots. And you'll see them in like, you know, science journals or whatever. Because you probably spend a lot of time reading science journals as a high school kid. But anyway, the first thing you need to know about scatter plots is there's correlations. Like the one I just drew, you know, whatever the situation is, who cares what the situation is, this definitely shows like a positive correlation. As you have an increase in the x direction, you have an increase roughly in the y direction. And you can kind of see that. Um, so there's, there's three correlations in, in scatterplot data. You can have a positive correlation, like the one I just drew. There's definitely, you know, you'll definitely also see situations where it's not perfect, but there'll be a negative correlation. You can see here, it roughly looks like it's kind of going downhill. And that's a negative correlation. Uh, and that might be like, I don't know, um, you could say like here as the number of hunters increases, the number of, you know, deer decreases, which is kind of a bummer because, you know, Bambi and all that. But so, so maybe the number of deer that are alive in a meadow decreases and it has a negative correlation to number of hunters, right? And then there's definitely scenarios in the real world that there's no correlation, right? It just definitely is like all over. You're looking for a correlation. You're like, ah, it's not positive. It's not negative. That's no correlation. So maybe like, I don't know, like what, you know, the color of the shirt you wear and your grades. I mean, that's a pretty bad example. But you get the point. There's no correlation to many things in nature and the world. So the first thing is positive, negative, and no correlation. What's interesting is, is that, again, when they make projections, like go back to the deer and the hunter thing. They'll want to kind of like write linear equations to make projections. Like, oh, I've noticed that as the number of hunters in this area increases, the deer, we'll go deer here, hunters decrease. And they'll say, they'll want to kind of get in line so they can make estimates as to when the deer will totally disappear. So they'll, their goal will be to write a linear equation. But you can tell right away, it's not a perfect line. So how could you possibly write a perfect y equals mx plus b line, you know, you'd want your b, your y-intercept, maybe up here, and you'd want your slope. It doesn't exist. So what they do is, this is weird, what they do is they'll pick two points that would closely represent the overall trend. And that's why this is opinion, a kind of. I mean, if you had 100 people, they might come up with 100 different best lines of fit. Lines of best fit is what it's called. Let's do a bad example. If I'm trying to create a, a trend line that roughly represents this, these two points probably would be pretty dumb. That does not make a good line. That, that would be pretty dumb, okay? So let's not pick those two. I think these two would be pretty dumb too. If I connected these two dots, you're, all you do is you find two points that you like and you connect them. That's the trick. Those two points are pretty dumb. I, I don't think that best represents the graph. So what I would do is I would pick two points that closely represents the overall trend, and I would only do my math from there. So let's say, okay, I'm looking at this. I honestly think this point and this point, okay, that's, come on, like, honestly, that's pretty close, right? So then you'd find these. Let's pretend like this was 1, you know, 50, and this was, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and this was 8, like, 4. Given two points, now you can totally write the equation of a line given two points. And we did that in other videos, and we'll do it here. But the step one to finding the line of best fit is to pick two arbitrary points that most closely make that trend look reasonable to the actual data. Now, this is easy, right? So now we'll do y equals mx plus b. The first thing we'll do is slope. y minus y, 4 minus 50 over x minus x. If you don't remember that, that is how you find the slope between two points, y minus y over x minus x. 
So that would be, okay, negative 46 over 7 is my slope. That's a terrible slope. So then I'd be y equals negative 46 over, oops, over 7, right? x plus b. And then I would find my b. And actually, this is pretty dumb. I'm going to do point slope form because this is so much easier to do. So I found my slope. We're all friends. I'm going to use point slope form to find the linear equation of a line. I can do any form I want. That's the easiest. That would be y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So my slope we have, and now what are my y and my x values? You can pick either point. Does not matter. Let's pick this point. Okay. So now I'd have y minus y. So I have y minus 4 equals slope negative 46 over 7 times x minus my x value 8. You like how it crammed it in there to make that as confusing as possible and as cluttery as possible? So that's it. You have your Okay, fine, I'll rewrite this because people are giving me a hard time. y minus 4 equals negative 46 over 7 times x minus 8. That is my linear equation for the line of best fit for this data. If anybody tells you a line of best fit is 100% perfectly accurate, they're lying because they picked two points out of a bunch of scattered in a scatter plot that most closely paralleled that out. Again, if I pick these two, I'd have a slightly different line. So 100 people might have 100 different answers. But that's how you calculate the line of best fit for any scatter plot. And also, more importantly, you can definitely see correlations, positive, negative, or no correlation. And remember, if you're having a hard time at your local high school, uh, you can take this class online at Silicon Valley High School. Pass it there, and the credits will be transferred back to you.